Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 169. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says the sum of the digits of a two-digit number, so we know it's a two-digit number, we, we are told that the sum of the digits of this number is 9. They go on to tell us that the difference between the number itself, the difference between the number itself and the one that you form by reversing the digits is 63. Question is, what is that number? Now, if you have watched yesterday's video, problem number 168, if you have watched it, 168, and as a matter of fact, you should have watched all of these videos in the sequence because the, the notion of expressing a two-digit number using the algebraic expression is something that we learned way back in problem number 65. It's important that you make sure that you watch all of these problems in the sequence. It will help you here. Problem number 65, 190, uh, problem number 65, 91, 111, 122, and yesterday we did 168. Now, if you have watched 168 yesterday's video, you will immediately recognize you will immediately recognize that the problem as it is presented to us is what we call yesterday is what we call yesterday a a damn silly one and so is this one this is the damn silly question why is it a damn silly question? you know why it is damn silly if you have watched yesterday's video number 168 you would know that right away because nobody in their right mind will sit there and solve this freaking thing algebraically. There is no reason to solve it algebraically because it's very simple. There aren't, there aren't too many scenarios where the sum of the digits will be 9. To start out with the sum has to be 9, start out with something basic like 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, 4, 5, and that's it. Those are the only four possible scenarios. And then they go on to tell us the difference between the number itself and the one that you form by reversing the digits. Well, let's reverse the digits, shall we? 81 will become 18, 72 will, 27 will become 72, 36 will become 63 and so forth. And you see the difference and see which one works. There are only four scenarios. Only one, or there are only four scenarios and one of them has to work. You can get figure out what the number they, the number they're talking, what number they're talking about in a matter of seconds. Let's try out this one, shall we? 11 minus 8 is 3 and 8 becomes 7, 7 minus 1 is 6. Oh, there we go. The difference is 63. What do you know? There you go. So what's the number? Find it. The number must be, since we are told the difference between the number itself and the one formed by reversing the day 63, the number is 81. Nobody in the right mind will solve this problem algebraically. So that's the damn silly one. I realized it after I, fin after I finished making it. Uh, I realized it that uh, most people will not do it algebraically. So let's make it an algebraic question. Let's make it a little bit more challenging one, shall we? Here we just, instead of just giving it away that the sum of the digit is 9, which gives the game away, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's make it a little bit more interesting so that it's no longer damn silly. Here's what we are told. What we are told in the first sentence was, is rather, 9 times, 9 times the sum of its digits now when I say it's, I'm talking about this part here, so this should have been this should have been the first sentence. This is the second sentence. Nine times the sum of his digits is equal to the number itself. And then we'll say find it. And now it becomes more interesting. Now we can't just do trial and error, you understand? Now we can't do trial and error. So let's do it, shall we? So this is the actual problem. It makes it more interesting. So the very first thing we have to figure out is how to express the idea, the notion, the concept of a two-digit number. I'm not going to keep repeating everything like a parrot, as I said, we did it yesterday, we did it in the previous problem. Which what it is is this, and the simple summary is this. If you have a number like, number like say, 45, and if we're going to pretend that T represents the tens digit and U represents the unit digit, that's, those are our two unknown. Those are our two unknown. This is a U. Then how do we express the notion of 45? 
45 is so called because it has 4 tens plus 5 ones. 4 tens. How many tens do we have? 4 tens. We have 4 tens. But of course, here we do not know how many tens we have. We do not know how many tens we have because it's an unknown quantity. It's a two digit number. That's the whole point. We have to find it. That's the unknown quantity. That's t. We have t tens. t times 10. And how many u's do we have? We do not know how many u's we have. Of course, here we have 5 because it's a 45. We know what it is. Here we don't. It's an unknown quantity. We have u, u ones. How many ones do we have? We have u ones, so it's u times 1. And of course, we can't leave it like this. t times 10 is going to be written as 10t. And 1 times u is going to be just u. So this is how you express the notion, the concept, the idea of a two-digit number. Now we're going to reverse the digits. So when we reverse the digits, when we reverse the digit, 10 times t, the t, t is going to appear in the unit digit place, and u is going to appear in the 10 digit place. And it becomes 10u plus t. And what do we know? The difference between the original number, which is this part here, and the one formed by reversing the digits is 63. We're going to make a use of it now. So the original number we said is this one right here. 10t plus u, this stiff number, minus when we get the number that we, by reversing the digits, the difference between the original number, the difference between the number itself and the one formed by reversing the digits is 63. This is our first equation. But that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough because we have two unknowns. We have two unknowns, the t and the u, and only one equation. We cannot solve for two unknowns with just one equation. We need two independent equations. And the second equation is going to come from that statement. Let's continue here. 10t minus a t, because it's a minus sign here. 10t minus a t is going to be 9t. And u minus 10u, u minus 10u is going to be minus 9u, equals 63. Divide the entire equation by 9, and we find that t minus u will have to equal 7. t minus u equals 7. Now let's work on this part. Let's work on this part. I need the room, so I'm going to have to erase this statement so that we can work there. Nine times the sum of its digits. So that was the that was the statement that we just finished. Nine times the sum of its digits. Sum of the digits is t plus u t plus u represents the sum of the digits, and we are told that if we take the 9 times that amount, that happens to equal to, that happens to equal to the number itself. The number itself is 10t plus u. That's how we express our number, 10t plus u. Let's work on it. We get 9t plus 9u equals 10t plus 10u. Bring the 9 to that side, so we're going to end up with a t equals and bring the u to this side, something has gone drastically wrong, has it? Perhaps not. So one more time, if you bring if you bring the 90 to that side, 10t minus 90 is t, and bring the u to that side, 9u minus u is going to become 8u. 8u, not 8t. Now we have two independent equations, we can solve for the two variables. t equals 8u, we can substitute right here. We're going to substitute this equation right here, t equals 8u. What's what happens? t equals 8u, 8u minus a u equals 7, which means 7u equals 7, which means u equals 1. Our unit digit is 1. If our unit digit is 1, our 10 digit must be 8 times 1, which is 8. Our 10 digit is 8, our unit digit is 1. 10 digit is 8, unit digit is 1. The number that we're looking for is 81. The number that we're looking for is 81. That's all. Bye now.